Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Today's talk topic is inspired on my morning meditation. I actually woke up, did a meditation right away, and I had this word in my head. It was on the, it was as though it was imprinted on my forehead. It was the word respect. Oh yes, Aretha, sing it to me. R E S P E C T. So at first, when my mental mind thinks of the word respect, respect, like looking up to someone better than or honoring of another person or recognizing a certain degree of honor or presence or presence like essence of a person right and it's like hierarchical like in my mental mind yet the way it came through for me in my my morning here and I'm just gonna grab my journal because I want to read to you something that I wrote about it just right out of meditation that respect is not a better than state respect as in a foundation It is not an above scenario, you guys. It is a foundation. This is what's just coming through with my insight, with my higher self and connection to my spiritual team this morning. Respect is trust that is being built. Brick by brick, stone by stone. We talk about trust as something that is built over time, right? You see, I think I'm mixed up or backwards in regards to that because and maybe it's an empathic thing a sensitive person very open-hearted thing but I have always felt that trust is something that you you give that's something that you allow that's something that is natural in a relationship until it's not so it doesn't take me long to trust you at all but it takes, and, and of course, there's degrees of trust, right? Definitely different degrees of trust. Like there's, you know, deeper intimate trust and such. And that does take a longer time to, to build and, and then even, even more um, care to maintain that. And at the same time, I have felt that trust is something that's just kind of natural in relationship and human relationship and connection. Trust is natural. And then, though, however... It is easily lost. It can be easily lost by one act, one misstep, one deep misunderstanding. It's not the walk on eggshells kind of thing. I don't want you to think that. And if we ever become friends, I don't want you to be worried that you have to walk on eggshells around me. Oh, no. When it comes to this trust energy, there's definitely a lots of opportunity to course correct, right? But once it's gone, it's really gone. And then you start from scratch again, right? And you take the learning from that loss with you. And that's the hard part because that's where a wound, a wound kind of opens up. So respect is in part the act of building trust. It's a demonstration, not proving like worthiness or value. It's not a proof of. Respect is not a proof of trust. It is a state or an essence of trust in action. Yeah, it probably is that. Yes, it probably is that. Respect is the essence. It's what you, it's, it's a way that you can see know, understand, feel, sense that trust is there. Yes. Yes. Because in a way, respect represents what you know, what you know about a person, what you know about a situation, a thing, an event. And when you have respect for that, whatever that is, it brings a foundation or a baseline of integrity. Oh, that's such a big word for me. I love the word integrity. Unfortunately, it it can kind of set me off pace sometimes. It can really put me into a place where I'm 
too focused on integrity and then I, I'm, 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 I can be demonstrating integrity and respect and all that and lose sight of my feeling and emotion. So I do think respect is an act and a way of being. It's both a way of being and an act. Um, yeah, because you can be respectful and open a door for someone, or you can be respectful and allow someone else to speak or to stop a conversation so someone else can, or to move something out of the way so someone can walk by, for example. Respectful. Yeah, I think respect is the foundation, and it's a foundation that trust can thrive in. And maybe even respect, maybe, just maybe, maybe respect is the place where trust can grow again. Maybe it can. Maybe it can be reborn. Maybe it can be safe when there is a series of, tr- of respect Respectful acts, respectful ways of being, respectful words and thoughts and actions. Words, thoughts, actions. Maybe then trust can be renewed. Hmm. Wow, you guys, this is deep. So when I think of respect, I really think of like an intensity. It feels like this... Either it's there or it's not. It's a yes or no. It's a hard line. There's, I know there's degrees of respect, just like there's degrees of trust, of course. But, and there could be debate. We could debate on whether it's earned or it's just a natural state. Respect It's just a feeling you have. I respect that. I, in other words, I respect that because I identify with you and your values and I recognize myself in you. Perhaps that's part of what respect is. Maybe respect in some ways, you guys, maybe. It's a mirror. Ooh, mirror. That's a deep tool. Let me tell you, man, that's a deep tool. That's a deep tool, the mirror. That's a deep tool for uh, coaching work, intuitive coaching work. That's a deep tool for self-healing work. That's a, a tool for psychic work, for seeing yourself. Looking at your reflection, that's a deep tool, the mirror for self love. So, what if respect is a form of self love? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes, it is definitely that. That's how it feels for me. Here comes my emotion about respect it is a tool of self love. Yes. If I'm able to receive the respect that someone else is giving to me, gifting to me, granting to me, even if it's like moving aside on the sidewalk, I, it, it reminds me of the essence that I have, the light within me that is my power. Not power over, but power of light, power of love, power of essence and energy that moves me through the world. And that respect, yeah, that's power. Not power over, power in power within. It's like my love moving through the world. And when when that is acknowledged, that is respect. Respect is acknowledging the love and the light and the beauty in another person. The respect shows through actions, words. It's an expression as well as a state of being. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Wow, respect has so much to offer us. Wow, it's not just a archetypal, hierarchical, patriarchal, blah, 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 structural thing. It's not for a few, it's for the many. It's for the masses. It's for all of us. And when respect is expressed and received, just like love expressed and received, when respect is shown, demonstrated, when it's present, it just opens up the opportunity for trust to flow. 
for a foundation to be made or a connection or energy to flow freely. It's what if respect it creates a foundation of freedom to flow. Most of us are just seeking freedom anyway. I mean, that's truly what a lot of things when I talk to clients boils down to wanting to feel free, be free to express themselves, to be themselves, to, to love, to be loved, to move through the world, to be seen, but not pointed out, to be known, to really be known. And what if respect helps us do that? Hmm. What if it does? What if it is self-love? Oof. Because don't you want to be, don't you want another person when you're in a relationship, don't you want someone to respect you, whether it be your kids or your partner, a coworker, a boss, etc. Don't you want to have someone respect you? And what does it mean when they respect you? It means they honor you or they see you as a human, as a person, for what you can bring, for the value you have. Respect means that they see you for your value, which leads into our worthiness, which is a common reoccurring pattern, life theme for everyone, something around worth, self-worth. You're too much, you're not enough. Somewhere along that range, we, we swing the pendulum back and forth and back and forth between not enough and too much and, and that worthiness, right? What if respect is recognizing value? And that's what it really means to us. One of the most valuable things to me is trust. So it would make sense. And integrity, which is truth. I mean, all these things, right? So for you, ask yourself, what is what does this mean for me? What really is respect about? Demonstrated, receiving. When you have that with someone in a circumstance or situation, what does that mean for you? And here's the big, big question. Okay, this is like the million dollar question. Is it a non-negotiable is it a core foundation, a standardized expectation? It is, is it just the baseline? Is it a must? And the answer to that for me is yes. Yes. Respect is a must. Yes. 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 Respect is a must because self-love is a must. It is a must. It is a requirement. There's no, when you don't have that, there's no relation. When you don't have that, when you don't have, then when there's not respect, there's no need for relationship. When there's not respect, there's no need to continue on to try to build something, whether it's a business or a job, to stay in the job or to stay in a relationship or if there's no respect, there's no, there's nothing for you regardless of everything else around it, of all the other things, bells and whistles, whatever, if there's not that core must have, it's like getting an apartment without a kitchen. Can you live without that? Or an apartment without a bathroom? I mean... That would be helpful. I mean, I guess you could have a communal bathroom, right? There's, there's ways around this. There's lots of people who are in relationship and in spaces without bathrooms. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm thinking of a dorm, you know, or a, a dorm, right? Or a hotel room. Like, there's spaces you can live and you can be without kitchens or bathrooms, etc. right? Like a hotel room or a dorm room. But that's not long term. That's not long term. You're not going to live there your entire life, which means re re respect, if I'm using this analogy, is a requirement. Sooner or later, it has to be there or you're not going to be there, right? Why would you settle for less than that? Why would you settle for not self-love? Respect is an extension of self-love. That's how it feels to me. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is a lot. 
We're talking about a lot. You need to get your journals out if you haven't already because there's a lot here. Whew. Respect as a foundation. Yeah, I think it's a baseline. Yeah, it does show that trust is being built and that it's in existence or it's in the process of being created. But without respect, there isn't trust. There can't be. There just can't be. There can't be. Trust, respect feels something like, to me, if I had to choose, it definitely feels more external, more expressive, expressed, or in action, an actionable thing, a behavioral thing. And like Aretha said, right? Find out what it means to me. Respect. What does it mean for you? What does it mean for you? And there's all sorts of other words that are going to come up here. Like for me, I said integrity right away and trust. Trust was the first thing that came through, then integrity. And then self-love and value, worthiness. All of these things are connected to respect. The word honor came through. It reminds me of the essential oils I've been using. Emerald Temple. You can look it up online, emeraldtemple.com. And I've been using honor oil. And it's very yellow, very uh, solar plexus, very spirit connected. And I was reading the invocations last night for the oil of honor. And it was about like worthiness, basically. It was about worthiness and them really honoring ourselves and our value as a human, as a person, recognizing that you have so much to offer and that you are so much and you are enough for yourself. You are so much that you're enough for yourself and everybody else in your life. You don't have to try. You just get to be. You get to be you when you're from coming from your core. So when I feel into this energy of this honor oil, I think about respect. What does it mean to have respect for yourself? Personal respect. We call this self-respect. Where's your self-respect? When we act in a way that another can recognize that we're not treating ourselves very well, we are not even being kind to ourselves. In fact, we are abusive to ourselves. Self-respect is a huge thing, especially in this, uh, this uh, time that we are in when we we're working so much with self-love and the awareness of love and the amplification of love. And understanding what that is, what that looks like, what that means. It's not just a spa day or a pedicure. It's so much more than that. And creating that space and that room for us to have the self-love. Well, in order to have that, we also need to respect the innate needs that we have. The dreams, the wishes, the desires, the wants, the need for time, the need to create space and room to process, to think, to let our minds wander, to daydream to have time that we would deem as unproductive, which really it is so productive. It creates efficiencies and pockets of energy in other areas of our life throughout our day, by the way. When you spend that time with yourself, it does create room. The things that we need, we have to become aware of and respect just the basics and not trade those away in order to be with someone else, to be in a job that really doesn't fit us long term. We can do anything temporary. You can do anything for a short amount of time, six months, a year, whatever, anything you can do temporarily. But long term, that's a completely different question. You cannot do that. And so the energy comes into play of you cannot trade away the things that you need that are most important to you, that are valuable to you so that you can stay or sustain, so you can avoid change, so you can avoid growing pains, so you can avoid difficult conversations or conflict. No, you can't do that. 
I mean, you can, it's called settling. It's called being miserable. It's called lacking respect for yourself. And then you don't, how are you going to respect anybody else? Respect then turns into almost this envy or jealousy of other people and what they have and what you don't because you haven't been willing to change. So if you start with respect and self-respect, what does that mean to you? Like, what does that look like? What are the things that matter most to you, regardless of anybody else's needs? I'm not talking about your kids' needs. Like, I need to be home for my kids. I need a job where I can get off early for my kids so I can be home for my kids when they get off the bus, for example, right? That was a thing I had for a long time. Like, I need to be around for my kids. That's not a self-respect thing. I'm talking just about you. You. What, is, what, what matters to you? Like, what's important to you? Like, what do you need? Like, do you need to go for walks? Do you need to, you know, uh, do your yoga every day? Do you need to have time to paint? Do you need to, to eat a certain way? Like in the morning, start your day off in a certain way? Or, or before you go to bed at night? Like, do you need to read a book or do certain things like kind of ritual like to help you to have a good night's sleep? Do you need a good night's sleep? How many hours of sleep do you need? Are you a person that can live on five hours or do you need like me? Nine. I'm a niner. (laughs) Niner, nine hours of sleep. All of these things, the knowing of yourself and what you need, it supports self-respect respect for you. And, and it then builds trust within yourself, which then makes it easier, newsflash, easier to trust your intuition and your spirit and messages you get. And it gives you a solid core foundation for trust, just a solid core foundation for trusting yourself. You're going to have self-doubt. It's normal. But it will not, you will not succumb to it because you have a solid foundation of respect, self respect. You know what you need to be a, a, a person that, the kind of person that you want to be in relationship with, the kind of person that you want as a coworker, the kind of person that you want as a parent, as a, as a friend, as a partner. You would want that. You be that person for you. That is what respect is about. That's you honoring the needs that you have, recognizing you got some core needs related to your values, related to your beliefs, that every once in a while you got to visit, revisit, have conversation with yourself, with you, not other people telling you, but with you, what fits with you. Because you will meet people that you will really like and they will have completely different belief systems in some areas, then it will shock you. But it doesn't mean you have to all of a sudden not like them or kick them out of your life. You can just respect where they are coming from is their baseline of need. And where I am coming from or you are coming from is your baseline of need. They can have theirs and you can have yours and you can still be in connection with them. You can still work with them as coworkers. You can still hang out with them at the holidays as family. Totally possible. Because when you have a level of self-respect and you trust yourself and you know what you need, you have some kind of foundation there here. You're not going to be threatened in any way by other people. Or you're not going to feel the need to have to adapt and change yourself so that they will like you or that you are palatable to them. You are not going to need their respect by selling off your own or changing your need, your core belief. Because then what you're doing is trading away your self-respect. And if you do that, how is someone else going to even respect you? (laughs) How is that even possible? There has to be a baseline. And respect in many ways represents that for us. Not how it traditionally, typically, structurally looks. It's deeper. Just like everything. 
Just like people, we're deeper, we're so much deeper than just the job or the role or the title that we have in our family, in the career, in the world. We are so much more than our gender, than our ethnicity, than where we come from. And we're so much more than one piece, one part. So much more. So spend some time with this. What does respect mean? And what does it mean to respect yourself? Self-respect. What do you need to respect yourself? And when you know that, then it is so much easier. You have more clarity to be in relationship with other people, whether it be a job or even like even a place you live, like if you're thinking about moving someplace else. Maybe the new place really doesn't represent, you think it does, but maybe it doesn't really represent the core needs that you have, you know? It just might be. Spend some time hanging out with yourself. Ask these harder questions and be willing to not have the answers. It's okay. It's not about getting the answers. It's not a timed quiz, my friends. It's about having the courage and the bravery to just ask the damn questions. Ask the damn questions of yourself. Be willing to not know. That is how trust is built. (laughs) That is how, within yourself, trust is built. Your mind wants answers, but your heart and your soul know that it is a process. You are building, creating this life. You're not trying to find the right answer. You're just brave enough to open up the dialogue and to ask yourself what you need. That is the scariest question. I am finding that myself right now. (laughs) It's the scariest thing. It's natural to be afraid. Ask and be willing to not know and be totally cool with that and get a damn journal. If you are listening to Sunday Morning Coffee and you do not have a journal, you need a journal. It can be a notebook I highly recommend a beautiful journal because it's more fun to write. It feels very special then. And a great pen. There's some great pens. Try different ones. Gel pens, other pens, heavy pens, metal pens, pencils, colored pencils, markers. Try different things. It makes a difference. I am telling you, the way something feels makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Especially for you, my empathic friend my sensory person that I know you are. Our senses are so heightened right now. It's lovely and awful. (laughs) So this is Bridget. Thanks so much for listening to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. This is my podcast here on Above Life Channel on YouTube. Above Life Channel is one of my YouTube channels. This is where I share my psychic and mediumship work. Every week on Monday, I do a channeling video with an afterlife celebrity guest. Because why? Because they're interesting and they provide us with insights to encourage us, definitely to inspire our spirit. I also have another YouTube channel, and that is Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube, Fairy Grasshopper. It's a place where I kind of have a catch-all for all my intuition stuff. So I share about intuitive talk topics there. Sometimes I do channeling of other types of energy like archangels, for example, saints, god goddess aspects and deities, totem animals as well from time to time. I also share a vlog over there about my psychic life. So you'll get that as well. I talk about tools, tips, techniques, things that help understand energy more so that you can understand how to be a a very awakened and aware spiritual person that's having a real human life because spirituality and intuition, energetics, healing, all that has to make sense in our human life. It has to be real so that we can use it for human life living. That's the point is to integrate and it needs to be practical. And so I share that on Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for being here. I hope I've inspired inspired your spirit, filled you with some hope today, and encouraged you to live your life. After all, that's the point here, isn't it? It's your life. So live it. Just live it.